Konnichiwa, I'm san It's Greg Wakazashi's Tea House over in Japan. How are you doing? Are you good? Are you Genki? Let me tell you why my head was in my hands. <sighs> I got up early this morning. I got up at 4am to watch the um, European final. Again, England versus Spain. Yeah, England lost. No surprises there. Although I thought we were going to get like hammered, you know, 5-0, but at least we put up quite a good fight. Ended up 2-1 to Spain and they were the best team in the competition. Ah, <sighs> what are you going to do? But anyway, let's get on to the comics. Hot picks of the week. This is my my um, titles I'm looking forward to this week. And we do have quite a lot. Let me just get the, uh, the, the screen up. There's, can you believe this, 18 new releases from Marvel, 10 from DC, and then there's quite a lot of indies this week too. Big titles of, to me for this week are Ultimate X-Men Issue 5 comes out. We've also got uh, Batman Superman World's Finest, a big fan of that. Um, I've got five indie choices and some might surprise you. Good to see that Red Coat is coming out and Destro already Issue 2. So, without further ado, let me get on with my picks for this coming week, starting off with DC. My first pick from DC is Batman Superman World's Finest Issue 29. Written by Mark Wade with art by Dan Mora. First of all, look at this crazy cover. We've got Superman and Batman's head being deconstructed. I love the little reflections of the mites there, can you see? A Mr. Mitzelblick, is it? <laughs> Mr. Mistletoe. The synopsis says, Will Doomite dine on the world's finest? The grand finale to Impossible is here. Apparently it's as insane as you think it would be. I don't know. I can imagine insane. I can imagine bonkers. I'm a bit of an expert. So, according to the synopsis, we've got a big doom mite who's about to eat Batman and Superman. What would they taste like? This series has been fun. This storyline, this story arc, it's been goofy. It's been a bit daft. Silver agey. I like it. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the fun and, of course, loving Dan Morris' art. And next we have Superman issue 16, an absolute power tie-in, written by Joshua Williamson with art by Jamal Campbell. Yes, Campbell's back. Looking at the cover, we've got Zatanna in here too, which I'm looking forward to. Here's a synopsis. Superman is down, but not out. Really? Last time I saw him, he wasn't looking good. Wallet and her forces are winning. While the Fortress of Solitude has become the home base for the survivors, the injured and powerless Superman must go on a dangerous mission into the Magic Realm. Let's see if Joshua Williamson can pull off an absolute power tie-in. I hope it's fun, I hope it's good. I like the sound of Zatanna. John Constantine, Hellblazer, Dead in America, Issue 7. Written by Cy Spurrier with art by Aaron Campbell. Now I know... I know what I said last last time, I said I'd kind of drop this series, but um, out of curiosity I read issue 6 and it was so much better than I was expecting. It was probably the, the best issue in a while. So yes, I'm back in, going to see how it's going. Apparently it's billed here as now being an 11 issue series, whatever that means. What was it, it's supposed to be 10? I thought it was meant to be 12. Anyway, John is lost, not just ask for directions lost. He's lucky if he can even identify what plane of existence he's on. With the enigmatic hitchhiker as his guide, John will have to find his way back to Nat and Noah. But when he does, he's finally going to have to explain that he's a walking corpse. I like the dark, gritty art style of Aaron Campbell in this. Cy Spurrier's writing sometimes makes me cringe, makes me like shake my head, wonder why he's doing a HP Lovecraft with his purple prose, like in the worst way. But other times, it's actually quite interesting, and he does have a good voice for John. And my final pick from DC is Dark Knights of Steel, All Winter, Issue 1. Story by Tom Taylor, it says, written by Jay Kristoff, with art by Tirso Cons. Who? Okay. So we've got the Elseworlds relaunch continuing here with what's called, or what's billed, a bone-chilling Dark Knights of Steel chapter starring Deathstroke. The snow falls thick, blood runs black, and colour itself is only a distant memory. The legendary assassin Deathstroke stalks a frozen wasteland, killing for coin among a nation of ever-warring Jarls. Jarls? Giles? Buffy? But when our murderer for hire finds himself cast in the role of reluctant guardian, will he fight to end the icy curse currently destroying his land, or be consumed by the sins of his own dark past? This is 4 99 but it says 40 pages. And do you like this cover, I've got to say. Let's see what it's like. 
And they only have one pick from Marvel this week. It is Ultimate X-Men issue 5. That's right, we're up to issue 5. Story and art by Peach Momoko. The new mutants face their first enemy. Maystorm isn't the only mutant with electric powers. And Noriko Ashida is here to make sure she knows it. A fun summer festival turns haunted and dangerous as spirits and surges collide. Plus, the shadow who's been haunting armor finally reveals his true face. A few things about this caught my attention. I like the um, the sound of the summer festival. It's coming up to summer festival, Natsu Matsuri season in Japan. Um, also, we're going to get the re- you know the reveal of the shadow. Who is the shadow man, or who's been haunting armor? People are kind of mixed on this series, I know, I hear it. Some people love it, some people really dislike it, strongly dislike it. But I've been enjoying it, even though it doesn't feel much like an X-Men book. I'm here for the Japanese horror and the kind of slice of life of Japan, the little bits and pieces we get from Momoko. Yeah, I'm kind of enjoying it, and I'm hoping this is going to be a good, exciting issue. I do like the cover, as I say, that is Summer Festival in Japan. Okay, let's move on to Indies. From Image Skybound, we have Destro Issue 2. It's written by Dan Waters with art by André Bressan. $3.99, by the way. Not much detail in the synopsis. It's saying here that Cobra Commander is breathing down Destro's neck and the mercenaries, Zamot and Tomax, seeking, uh, are seeking to dethrone him as the world's premier weapons manufacturer. He'll have to survive the future in order to build it. So a little bit vague, but... Yeah, as you know, if you saw my review, I enjoyed issue one. I thought it was good, it was fun, it was kind of silly at times, a little bit goofy, but I liked that about it. I liked the art style, it reminded me of the old Battle Action Force comic back in the UK, back in the day. And as a bit of a fan of Dan Waters, who I know can run a bit hot or cold, yeah, I'm I'm up for like giving this at least three issues before I decide to stick with it or not. But as far as I know, it's um, it's uh, only a miniseries, isn't it? Is it four or five issues? So yeah, I think I'm here for the ride. This is followed by another image title, part of the Ghost Machine universe, Redco issue four, written by Jeff Johns with pencils by Brian Hitch and inks by Andrew Curry. This, don't forget, is still three ninety nine, which all the Ghost Machine books are, which is great. Again, not that much in the synopsis. It's continuing the story of Simon Pure, mercenary possibly immortal, travelling with a 13-year-old Albert Einstein, trying to find out the secrets behind the Brotherhood, the Founding Fathers of America. I like the kind of national treasure, John Constantine feel to this, the magic, the supernatural angle. Also, it's just so much fun. You know, you feel like the, uh, the creators are having a blast putting this together, which I'm sure they are. Very cool cover by um, Brian Hitch, I've got to say. There's a variant cover that's done by Gary Frank and Brad Anderson, which is pretty awesome as well. My third indie and third one from Image, it's the Image Show, is Rat City issue 4, written by Erica Schultz with art by Z Carlos. Only 2 dollars folks, I want to point that out. Not much of a synopsis, it says here as Peter, Peter? Peter Parker, as Peter's powers continue to grow and evolve, he starts to learn a bit more about where they come from, and that means he becomes a target. I've been enjoying this out of pretty much all the Spawn Universe books. I think I'm enjoying this the most now. It's Batman Beyond vibes, a little bit of cyberpunk, almost Blade Runner-esque, a little bit of a Judge Dredd feel at times too, just like the setting, you know, the world building. But yeah, this book has been cool, it's been fun, I'm enjoying the art as well. We'll see how it goes. Are you reading it, by the way? Let me know in the comments. He swaps his long sword for a wakizashi. So next up from Dark Horse, it is Usagi Yojimbo, The Crow, issue four, priced at four ninety nine now. Written and drawn, of course, by Stan Sakai. Usagi, Gen, and Stray Dog have discovered where the rival bounty hunter group, led by the ruthless Inuyoshi, is holding Yukichi hostage. The rescue attempt leads to a huge confrontation, but they receive news that may force the vicious enemies to form an uneasy alliance. I mean, what hasn't been said about Usagi Ojimbo over the years? I'm a huge fan. Can you believe it's been going on for it's 40 years now, as far as I know? And it's always quality. You can guarantee you're not going to get a dud issue of Usagi. And my last pick of the week, it's indie, it's also from Dark Horse, it's called Paranoid Gardens, issue one. This is a new release, a new, I think, mini-series, or it could be an ongoing. 
written by Gerard Way and Sean Simon, arts by Chris Weston. It's billed in synopsis as a kind of mix-up of ER meets Doctor Who on acid. Their words, not mine. Here we go. Let me give you uh, the synopsis. Lou is a nurse at the most bizarre care centre in the universe. The staff are not entirely human and the case is downright unearthly. Aliens, ghosts, superheroes and more creatures plague its hallways as both doctors and patients and the hospital itself seems to be somewhat self-aware. Lou believes that despite a recent failure at her job, she's been given some sort of higher calling in this mysterious place and decides to rise to the challenge. Along the way, she must fight her way through corrupt staff members, powerful theme park cults, <laughs> you what? and her own personal demons and trauma to meet this challenge and discover what secrets the gardens hold. Great title, by the way, Paranoid Gardens, and I do like this cover. The cover is by the, the main artist, Chris Weston. What do you think? Intrigued? And here's the rest from DC this week. We've got Nightwing issue 116, Wonder Woman issue 11, Titans issue 13, Catwoman 67. Wow. Then we go down the row below. Green Lantern War Journal issue 11 and Batman Wayne Family Adventures chapter 121. Not sure what that is. There's also a Crisis on Infinite Earths facsimile reprint of issue 4. And for the rest from Marvel, we've got the Immortal Thor Annual 1, Incredible Hulk issue 14, Spectacular Spider-Men issue 5, The Invisible Iron Man issue 20, Star Wars issue 48, and Phoenix issue 1, which is 499, From the Ashes, A New Beginning. Go down to the row below, The Amazing Spider-Man Blood Hunt issue 3, X-Men Blood Hunt, Laura Kinney the Wolverine issue 1, Blood Hunters issue 4. Dracula Blood Hunt issue 3. There's a lot of Blood Hunts, aren't there? Scarlet Witch issue 2. Spider Woman issue 9. And Namor issue 1, which is another 4 99 title. And the bottom row Daredevil Woman Without Fear issue 1, 4 99. Aliens What If issue 5. And Annihilation 2099 issue 3. On to Indies now, and from Image we also have The Walking Dead Deluxe, issue 93, Undiscovered Country, issue 30, G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero, issue 308, Fireflies, issue 7, What's the Furthest Place From Here, issue 19, and let's go down to the row below, Napalm Lullaby, issue 5, New Series, Witchblade, issue 1, which is 499 by the way, Spawn Universe Misery, issue 2, Poor Evil, Issue 5, Remote Space, Issue 2, and the rather bizarrely titled Plastic Death and Dolls, Issue 2. Just a few more, if you scroll down. We have The Weatherman, Issue 7, and Rifters, Issue 2. Okay, let's finish off with all the rest of the indies together. From Dynamite, we've got Thundercats, Issue 6, Boom, Off a Briar, Issue 7, and Man's Best Friend, Issue 5. From IDW, we've got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Saturday Morning Adventures, issue 15, plus TMNT The Untold Destiny of the Foot Clan, issue 5. So you've got two Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles releases this week. Dynamite have Red Sonja, issue 12, and then IDW have got Star Trek Annual 2024. Go down to the row below. Again from IDW, Star Trek, issue 22. Boom, we've got I Heart Skull Crusher, issue 5. Dark Horse bring us Into the Unbeing, Issue 2. And Dynamite have The Powerpuff Girls, Issue 1. Boom Studios give us Lawful, Issue 2. Then Dark Horse give us The Witcher, Corvo Bianco, Issue 3. Now this title caught my attention. Oni Press have got Biker Mice from Mars, Issue 1. It's 4 dollars but it looks like it could be a lot of fun. That almost made my pick of the week, or sorry, picks of the week or ones to look out for. I might pick that up, you know. IDW have got The Rocketeer, Breaks Free, Issue 1. And then Alien Books give us The Valiance, Issue 3. I think this used to be Valiant, right? And now it's published by Alien Books. Interesting. Dark Horse have got Heart Piercer, Issue 3. Archie Comics, Chilling Adventures presents Truth or Dare, Issue 1. And then from Mad Cave, we have Mugshots, Issue 2. For any Avatar fans, Dark Horse have got Avatar, Frontiers of Pandora, Issue 5. Titan offer Elric, the Necromancer, Issue 1. 
that's another one that kind of caught my attention. I'm gonna, just going to have a look at it. It'll depend on the art to see when I pick that up. Also from Titan, High on Life issue 2. And then Mad Cave bring us the Mammoth issue 2. Xenoscope have got Van Helsing Hexed issue 1. And Fantagraphics bring us Psychodrama Illustrated issue 8. Mad Cave again with The Last Wardens issue 1. Just a few more now. From Archie Comics, Archie Jumbo Comics issue 352. Anyone reading Archie? Do let me know if you are. And then two from Fantagraphics. Peep Show issue 15 and EC Fan Addict Fanzine issue 6. That is $16 by the way. As always, thank you so much for watching this far. If you're still here, I salute you. You are my captain. Okay, thanks they are. And do drop a comment. Do let me know what you think and what you're looking forward to. What are you picking up? I always like to read your pull lists and get some hints and tips from you guys as well. And yeah, if you left a comment, that would be fantastic. Okay, this has been Grey from Wakazashi's Tea House. <sighs> Recovering from the lack of sleep, uh, lack of passion from England. Nah, it was all right. It wasn't too bad. You know, same old story, lost a final yet again. And as I say, hope to see you in a future video. I'll have some reviews out this week. Matane. Oh, sniff that.